The rain fell hard that night in Providence, Saturday, March 13th, and booze flowed out of bottles just as quickly. It was enough for Greg Hart to be highly intoxicated. That's what police said. The state's medical examiner agreed. The 23-year-old Massachusetts man got drunk and drowned. Drunk, no. Drowning, no. Nothing adds up. That's why so strongly, if you knew Greggy, you'd understand the pieces do not fit. And what about the bar owned by police officers? That's where Hart was last seen alive. On the internet, I see a lot of real wild things in that bar. It's a anything goes type of a place. On the night Greg Hart went missing, he was out celebrating with some old college buddies here at the Red Room in downtown Providence. He had just gotten a new job with a software company, a job that was going to give him some real money for the first time. Life was taking off. He put a smile on everybody's face and people loved him. Greg graduated with honors from UMass, got accepted into an officer's program to be a Navy fighter pilot. His family says he wasn't your typical late night partier. Whoever met my son thought he was quite a young man and uh, he was impressive. Hart drove down to Providence from Dedham, Mass in his Mustang after getting a late start. It was 10 o'clock and he was heading out with Will McClendon, Zach Pisco, and Zach's girlfriend, Megan O'Keefe. The group hit up the Red Room. What happened next is unclear. A police report says some type of disturbance occurred. Was it a fight? Did someone get punched? His friends are not talking to the media. What we do know is that Greg went missing. That was clear. Providence police said they were on the case. We take all missing persons case seriously. We have quite a few and we have protocols in place that we follow so that they're all taken seriously. Two and a half days later, a different group of Hart's friends from Massachusetts who were not with him that night found his body. It wasn't the police. The 23 year old lay tangled in fallen debris on the riverbank of the Winasquatucket, less than one mile from where he was last seen alive. I think it's pretty ridiculous that we had to find him when we didn't even know where we were in Providence. We didn't know the area at all. That's the inside of this shirt. See the, look at that. In the basement of his Massachusetts home, John Hart shows us the last clothes his son ever put on. Rhode Island's medical examiner said Greg Hart drowned, that his blood alcohol content was 0.25, nearly three times the legal limit. The finding, though, doesn't explain why his white undershirt turned almost brown, underneath a more cleaner-looking dress shirt. Here it is again. Why would a T-shirt be brown underneath a clean-looking dress shirt? Both had supposedly been soaking in the same river water. That's the outside. See it? Look at it. Some other parts of the case started to raise eyebrows in Hart's family. Providence detective Mark Sacco first began investigating Greg's disappearance on March 15th, just one day before his body was found. But ABC6 has learned that Detective Sacco owns the property. That's right, the property where the Red Room sits. You gotta be kidding me. I'm talking to the guy with my son was last seen at this place. That's a conflict of interest. In other words, no, what? Yes, send somebody else. Sacco may own the property, but Rebecca Carroll, seen here in provocative online photos, owns the Red Room. Rebecca Carroll is the wife of Providence police officer Sean Carroll. That means two officers make money from the Red Room bar. Remember, a police report mentions some type of disturbance at the Red Room that night. Has anybody interviewed the bartenders the, that night? Has anybody interviewed the bouncer? If so, there is no mention of it in any reports. ABC6 tried talking to Detective Sanko, the Carrolls, and Police Chief Dean Esserman. Hart was found in the river with his wallet and iPhone. AT&T records detail text messages and calls between Greg and his friends shortly before he disappeared. His last known contact was an eight-minute call at 1.21 in the morning to his friend, Will McClendon, who was with him at the Red Room. What was said? Where was Greg? McClendon isn't talking to ABC6, and here is what Greg's iPhone looks like now. It's in pieces. Apple, the phone's manufacturer, says it was taken apart in a way that no information can be retrieved.
Who did you get that phone from? Uh, I got them from, from the province police, from a detective. Not a lot of business is getting done these days inside Bob Corkery's office. He's Greg's grandfather, and he posted a $70,000 reward. He says Greg was murdered, and he's got pictures of his grandson's beaten up body before he was embalmed at a funeral home. His nose is damaged, his eye is damaged, his left hand has a, has a bad bruise on his little knuckle. He has a, a bruise on his right, right hip. There's two holes in the boy's shins. Same locations. I wish somebody had taken a look to see if those were restraints. How else do you get two of those? If you're in the, in the water floating down a stream, you hit something that gives you two shots the same place on, on both legs? I don't think so. A bright cross marks the muddy spot along the Winasquatucket where Hart was found. His body now rests in a Massachusetts grave, but his family's search for answers never will. I want whoever's responsible to be accountable for it because what they did to him shouldn't have happened.